I'm Louis Crosby, and I am in uh, Julia Creek, heading north. And I think this is uh, Old Normanton Road, isn't it, Mr. Iron? Yes. And so uh, we hope to find Teldora Road and uh, the access to Manfred Downs. Uh, glad that we uh, got out of the hut and uh, done some exploring. I think that I was convinced that I would have uh, been duly arranged by this time with all the station owners. But okay, this is, this is a good thing to do. So let's see what happens. And we just met the uh, grader. Now, our road works going on, and then there was the water truck, which is why the road was wet. <laughs> uh, thank God my car is uh, up to it. Subaru Forester. Thomas John Quilty, pastoralist and bush poet, was born on 4th of April 1887 at Normanton, Queensland. The second of six children of Irish-born parents Thomas Quilty Sr. and his wife Mary. His father worked at various times as a fencer, teamster, innkeeper and grazier. In 1891, he settled on a property at Croydon in the Gulf Country and named it Oakland Park. Here we go. What's that say? The Old Normanton Road. Manfred, see? This one goes to Malungra. Auckland and Manfred. Malungra is up the end of the old coastal road.
Here we are at Manford Dells. Uh, there has been a success in our exploration for today. Manford Downs was in the 20s the uh, property of Arthur Underwood who was heir to the fortunes of James Underwood, Australia's most powerful trader. In Manford Downs he held a racetrack and a pub which formed an invigorating part of the social life of this region. Manfred Downs in Queensland is a farm and homestead about 1400 kilometres west-northwest of Brisbane and is about 120 metres above sea level. The nearest sea is the Arafura Sea which is part of the Indian Ocean about 310 kilometres north-northwest of Manfred Downs. The nearest more populous place is the village of Julia Creek which is 47 kilometres away, with a population of around 520. Yes, you can just wander over there. Oh, okay. All right, then. I think you're awesome. the remains of the old um, baker's oven just up behind the chook pen, but mm -hmm. unfortunately yeah. a tree grew through the middle of it. Oh, okay. So it fell over. So all these oh, that's all right. From the baker's, that's good. From the blacksmith shop. All yeah, yeah, yeah. Except that's an old oven. Ah. Margaret, our motto is, may you live long <laughs> and may you die happy. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> And all, all right. Irish saying. Thank you. <laughs> okay then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to say a couple of things there before we? Hmm. About that Cobb and Co. All right. Was there. Okay. Here we are at Manfred Downs Homestead. The Cobb and Co. Stage used to stop here, and. Uh, I don't think there's anything to do with it, <laughs> but okay, we're going to have a look around. And let's well, sheep stations and cattle stations were often like a little village, where it had uh, residents and uh, visiting shearers and workers, and they all had huts, and some of them had. Uh, uh, cottages. And th th there was a bakery here and uh, we are uh, about to try to find the remainder of the baker, the baker's up. Here, look, I see something. Okay. 
I'd say a bunch of stones, big stones. Yeah. Mm, that would be it. Walk up to the grass. This is Margaret Woodhouse indicated that there was a uh, bakery in uh, this situation in, on the property and this looks like it for sure well, you know, that the, uh, there is a tree growing through the chimney, it will be protected for a while. Here we are at the Flinders River. There are two major rivers in this region, the Flinders and the Saxby. I'm sure they would flood up in the wet. The Flinders River, the, by which I had hoped to see the former Arizona station, if it is still here, as Mrs. Margaret Woodhouse of Manford Down says. But okay then, apart from that, it's a pleasure ride. Let's uh, see if there's any water in the river. Mm. It's hard and dry, Mr. Island. Queensland is home to nearly half of Australia's beef cattle and the vast majority of those beasts contain at least some Brahmin blood. As a result, the Queensland cattle industry has come to depend on these animals whose origins lie outside Europe and which are better able to cope with the local environment. Whilst today humped cattle are a common sight in Queensland, their adoption took place relatively recently and they were firmly rejected at first. The rise of the Brahmin in tropical Queensland dates from the 1960s and occurred only after a concerted campaign on the part of government agricultural researchers. By 2001, that shift was estimated to have benefited the Queensland cattle industry by $8.1 billion. Before 1917, when Tom joined the first Australian train tour with Sir John Forrest, Thomas Senior dissolved Quilty and Sons and made Tom the CEO of the new Quilty Brothers. They bought the property Europa Springs, a subdivision of the Scottish near Malungara in Queensland. It was Bowen Downs Hill at the centre of Europa that Mount Bowen is named after. It is believed that the Underwoods and the Quilties had a prior association in the Gulf Savannah around Croydon. It is also believed that in total 
Manfred Downs and Melundra were part of Arthur Underwood's properties surrounding Arizona, which was his primary base. Action Channel is Melundra. Here we are, They're approaching Melundra Station at the... Uh, of uh, Action Cattle Company and uh, as means that we have passed Eureka Springs and and Arizona. Let's see if we can get some ideas from these people. I think there is some chance the waste course and pump of which I speak Wow. Melundra Station is a pastoral lease that operates as a cattle station in Queensland, Australia. It is located about 144 kilometres northeast of Cloncurry and 197 kilometres south of Croydon. The station occupies an area of approximately 1 million acres or 4,046 square kilometres and is the primary breeding ground for the Acton Land and Cattle Company which is able to stock 40,000 head of cattle. The property has at least one outstation, Crowfells, which has a Santa Gertrudis stud. There's a trade you all know well, and it's bringing cattle over on every track to the Gulf and back. Men know the Queensland Rover, so pass the Billy round, my boys. Don't let the pine pot stand there, for tonight we'll drink the health of every overlander. I'm from the northern plains, where the girls and grass are scanty, where the creeks run dry. Tom Quilty was an outstanding cattleman, an authority on northern Australia, a skilled potty dodger, and a bit of a menace to his neighbours. Generous but loath to give praise, he participated enthusiastically in outback social activities. He invested in the Kimberley Hotel at Halls Creek and donated money for a grandstand at the local racing club. To raise funds for the Royal Flying Doctor Service, he published a slim volume of verse, The Drover's Cook, in Sydney in 1958. The poems dealt with station life, drinking, personal relationships and raising children of mixed blood at Springvale Homestead. In 1966 he donated the Tom Quilty Gold Cup for an event that has become a National Endurance Riding Championship. Well here we are, we have finally found Arizona. 
a station of considerable interest in our movie production. Uh, we are a little bit confused because there appears to be another Arizona south of Carnuna. Okay, I'm glad this is the one. It, uh, it more perfect uh, for the script. Uh, and uh, uh, so I, I get Mr. Philip Kerr, that is Councillor Kerr, the Mayor of uh, McKinleyshire, and uh, just have a chat about how far we would like to go. If you want to sit down and do an interview, that would be just fantastic. But at this stage, uh, what we will say is that I am uh, pleased to the opportunity to cut some of it out because we may need to uh, move on back to uh, Sydney as soon as possible. Well, what a name for an Australian cattle station, Arizona. Uh, I'm sure that it had some Spanish background, that word, that name. Maybe it means arid place, and certainly this is one of those. So let us make a move, my boys, for that you promised land And do the best we can, my boys, to lend a helping hand To lend a helping hand, my boys, where the soil is rich and new In spite of all those unknown tracks, we'll show what we can do So over you and I, oh, a digging we will go I'll stay down south no more, my boys, so let the music play In spite of what I'm told, I'm off in search of gold and making a push for that new rush a thousand miles away. Hmm. Yeah. And, uh... The Kawana is a keen gardener. Along the Taldora Road, 160 kilometres north of Julia Creek in Queensland's Gulf Country, McKinley Shire locals Philip and Tanya Kerr live on Arizona Station with their three young daughters. Tanya, a keen gardener, has transformed their homestead into a 0.8 hectare sanctuary. Due to the climatic conditions, I've gone for a tropical look, she says. Her passion has resulted in the addition of perimeter beds around the buildings and fences with colourful and textured foliage plants. The Kerr family has also reportedly paid $23 million for Claraville, located in the heart of Queensland's northern gulf of Carpentaria. The 217,000 hectare efficient low-costing breeding enterprise is located 80 kilometres from Croydon and 350 kilometres to both Julia Creek and Richmond. The Kerr family owns the 120,000 hectare Yelvertoft station, 110 kilometres northwest of Mount Isa, and the 69,000 hectare Arizona station. Yeah. Got it. Uh, yeah, otherwise, there's not much that. that I mean, 
the connection with Tom and, and, and Olive, and you all, you all know the story, Olive was about 14 or 15. Yeah. And, and they used to meet over here in a water hole, eh? He'd ride up yeah. the river and they'd meet over there. That's why the ashes end up over the river. I would write, I have written up that the Underwoods have, have on a monthly basis, a gathering for the district. Mm -hmm. And that, that uh, Tom was married to Lillian Burr. Mm -hmm. Uh, the sub inspector's uh, daughter, mm. and uh, and so his uh, she uh, Olive at fifteen gives uh, performance uh, uh, of uh, bush poetry mm. and does a scene from uh, Othello, mm. uh, and uh, she is also an accomplished dressmaker, mm. so she shows her dresses. Up. And uh, so Tom and Patty go to a fence nearby and discuss uh, discuss all of it. And uh, so okay. Tom decides even then, yeah, a man of 33, that she is it. She is the one I have to have. And Patty reminds him that he's married, but he says, and he knows that they've been fighting <laughs> like cats and dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Right, so, okay, in this so, context, is this property yeah. is um, as good as any room is probably even better than uh, Arizona ever was. So, just um, uh, let's uh, take a few shots around. You want to just wander around, do what you want, take a few shots. I had a very important football game there. Oh, okay. Um, oh, sorry. It's already right, two o'clock. All right. The Broncos. Yeah, very, very good. Bronco fans. Oh, yeah. um, and then. Um, See on the track, if I can do anything, you let me know. Yeah. yeah. Have you got my number? Yep. My number? Well, I uh, don't know. I don't think so. Well, he, uh, Melissa. Melissa will give it here. Get Melissa. Yeah. I get it off Melissa. You get it off Melissa. I also need a go to my community to get uh, maps of the properties. Uh, yeah, right here. Yeah. All good. You do that. Your number's in anyway, look. I've got it. Mobile over. Is that you? 0448? 645. 645795. Yes. Got it. Got it. Um, right. Right. You fellas go for a wander and we'll okay. let me know down the truck if I can do something. Alright. Thank you very much. Right, you, mate. Okay. Bye-bye. We'll make it an eye to create an um, Outback magazine article. Yeah. Amongst them. Yeah. Oh, look at those. They're like little... Oh. I wonder what that is. That tree there, look. I'll have to investigate. <laughs> I know. I just met the Honourable the Mayor of McKinley Shire, Councillor Philip Kerr, with his wife, owners of the Arizona Station, uh, where we are now. It appears that the original Arizona has gone, and that it uh, has been picked over in a similar way to Manfred Downs uh, during uh, World War I. So I am uh, keen to create uh, a, a, uh, a few videos about this place and some stills and we may put it to Outback Magazine. Maybe the old property was adjacent.
to this pond on the other side. What's over there? Look. Can you see them? Pigs were brought from Europe to Australia by the First Fleet in 1788. Oh, two pigs. Imported as livestock. Pig. Pigs soon escaped and established wild populations that have expanded over time. In 2021, it was estimated that Queensland had up to 2.3 million feral pigs. Ooh. They are among yeah, Queensland's yeah. most widespread and damaging Ooh, pest yeah. animals. Feral pigs spread invasive plants, degrade soil and water, prey on native species, damage crops and livestock, and carry diseases. A feral pig is a pig that lives in a wild state and is not being farmed or kept for another purpose. A pig is considered to be farmed or kept for another purpose only if it is in an escape-proof enclosure. Feral pig species are typically smaller, leaner and more muscular than domestic pigs with well-developed shoulders and neck and smaller, shorter hind quarters. I'm leaving. I'm leaving the station. Well, that's it. I have. Uh, we have been at um, Arizona Station, uh, a beautiful uh, homestead uh, with uh, three uh, uh, or four buildings, and so uh, I'm glad we came. Uh, uh, Phil Kerr and his wife are uh, good people, and I'm sure that uh, owing to their uh, assistance in the future, this production will proceed uh, uh, within uh, a very uh, early space of time. You can see I didn't rehearse that. <laughs> the 1920s brought low prices for cattle, poor rainfall and personal problems. Quilty's marriage founded when he became involved with Olive Underwood, daughter of a neighbouring station owner. In 1937, he and Olive left Queensland to join Patrick, who by then owned Bradshaw's Run on the Victoria River, Northern Territory. Next year they bought the adjacent Coolabar station as well as the Six Mile Hotel at Wyndham, Western Australia. Patrick died in 1938, favoured by his brother's will. Tom lived at Coolabar with his family for most of the ensuing decade. After consolidating their pastoral holdings, they moved west in 1948 to Springvale Station, south of Bedford Downs. Tom eventually divorced his wife in July 1964 and married Olive on the 11th of September that year at the District Registrar's Office, Halls Creek. Oh, that's